get a phone call and, and you live 30 hours flying time away. But no matter, you jump on the plane and you make it to be here tonight. Sir Richard Hadley. And already here, actually, so I can't say he flew in especially, but in 2000, the Indian Cricket Awards ceremony, recommending the greatest Indian cricketers of the century, this man was voted number one. Couple there. I, I've got to, I have to start. I have to start with Benedict Delphos. Where are India's fast bowlers? We never had fast bowlers, so why are we talk about that? I think, I think we left that thing for the best Indies, Australia, and South Africa, perhaps New Zealand. We, we didn't. And part of that, we left it to Pakistan. I think they produced a great fast bowler in the world. Good answer. Where are the opponents? <laughs> I think we believe in uh, being an officer. In our country, I think white people ruled for 300 years, so they believe hard work, they don't believe, they like to be a batsman. So we produce more batsmen than a bowler. So perhaps that's why we have something to do with Rahul Gavir, Sunil Gavaskar and all that. So we don't believe working hard. But unfortunately, I was one who used to really work hard to survive with these uh, uh, batsmen. Great answer. Um, and nobody worked harder than Sir Richard Hadley. Um, thank you for making effort to come here. I know you come all the way from New Zealand just for the night. Uh, it's great to see you. And you did work hard. In fact, in fact you remodeled yourself. You changed from a terrible quick to a well-armed shield. Well, I learned after a few years of running in from 25 metres and uh, still getting hit to the boundary, there was a lot of wasted, uh, wasted effort. But uh, it was interesting playing against the West Indies in 1980 back in New Zealand. And I uh, just wanted to correct Michael Holding, actually, in a movie called Fire in Babylon. Uh, he did say that uh, since February and March of 1980 through to 1995, they never lost a test series. Well, we beat them in 1980, February and March. We beat them. And of course, we, we had to face Andy and Joel and, um, and Mikey and, uh, and Crofty. But they had to face out the attack of Hadley, Chatfield, Cairns and... Uh, <laughs> And we beat them without a tag. But uh, after a while, I learned that running off a long run uh, was, was taking a big toll on my body. And uh, playing county group here in England, of course, for 10 years, if I wanted to survive for a, a longer period of time, but the shorter run uh, was certainly the answer to me. And as it turned out, I was three times more effective on the shorter run than what I was in the first 10 years uh, on the longer run. So, I really honed up my skills uh, here considerably in the And And were you compromised in pace by coming off the shorter run? Uh, probably uh, a metre, uh, but I was still quick enough at times to put a batsman on his, uh, on his back side. In fact, it was interesting, uh, you know, with uh, Weir's talking about, ever well, since we've been here, we've been talking about new knees and new hips. And I guess uh, I'm due to have one, but you know. But, um, but uh, you know, I've probably bowled about 100,000 balls at various levels of cricket throughout my career, and I thought, I'm, I'm going to sue New Zealand cricket. <laughs> because they never told me that the amount of cricket and balls I've been to bowl is going to do all this damage to my body. And I didn't think solicitors had a sense of humour, and I, I went to my solicitors, I'm going to sue New Zealand cricket because you know, they, you know, they owe me something. And my sister said, well, uh, you haven't got a leg to stand on. <laughs> and, and I said, I know. But once I beat New Zealand cricket in this case, I'm going to go to Nottingham cricket, I'm going to go to Tassie cricket, let's see if we get a bit of a payday, because there's not a lot of money uh, in the game for us when we play. Uh, well, Peter Cook and Dudley Moore said, sketch, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing against you, right, Nathan, and neither of you. Um, <laughs>
No, I don't think so. I think over the period of time you start learning uh, the art. I think the condition you get into that, so you just start, start working that way and what you can best get best out of that. That's, I didn't born in birth or, or let's say uh, in Barbados or somewhere uh, where every young kid pick up uh, you know, the ball, they want to go fast. I think I come from the North India, where uh, uh, they didn't have bridges. Um, uh, the fast bowling was out of the blue, somebody can hold that, but uh, it's somehow, back of my mind, it was just, uh, you know, sometimes you go that, your know, mind goes towards that when we used to this dance with the Wesley Hall, Charlie Gretwin, and Croft, the you know, Michael holding, these boys bowling, and Tomo when I was getting up, growing up, and that, those are the bowlers. So either you intend to go towards the batsman, or you intend to go towards the bowler. Being North India, you know, the part where we come from, you're basically more aggressive people, so perhaps I want to hold fast. Uh, reason many, but just want to hold fast. But I couldn't hold fast, the wicket wasn't there, my body wasn't there, but attitude was there. You, you both have something in common, actually. You, you kind of must have felt at times you were going to the whole of India. Because, as you pointed out, you, you didn't have a partner in crime. So many great fast bowlers have hunt, hunted in pairs. You, you didn't have that luxury. Was that an advantage or disadvantage to you, you think? Both ways. You can say that when you're alone, you're not responsible, but you take four wickets also. When you are a four bowlers bowling, so the wickets can be shared also. So, Whichever way you want to take it, you can, but of course, for a team, if you have a pair of fast bowlers, or you can have two, three, four fast bowlers, you really enjoy. You can always terrorize the batsman. They never come on the front foot. I mean, all respect to all the batsmen in this room. I mean, looking at these fast bowlers, they don't like to be on the front foot. They like to be on the back foot. <laughs> you want to, you want to go quick, but if you know, at the end of the day, you wait to go 30 hours in a day, you slowly start working, you know, a lot of people said fast bowler doesn't have a brain, but I defy that, and I said fast bowler have a lot of brains, and they know what to do to the batsman. They got 431 wickets in 22, you've got to have a brain. We may have a brain, but uh, just to, to qualify, um, you know, I didn't really have out and out quick bowlers at the other end, and from a personal point of view, it was probably an advantage simply because if you're the number one strike bowler, you know, you're going to pick the ball and you're going to bowl it. You're going to choose the end. You're going to open the bowling. You're going to bowl just before lunch. You're going to bowl after lunch. You're going to bowl before tea. You're going to get the second new ball <laughs> at some stage. And you're going to bowl at the tail. So you've got a pretty good chance of picking up a beer and uh, share a weapon. So, uh, you know, you bowl the balls, put them in the right place, you've got a chance. Well, I would put it slightly different. When you're a single bowler, a batsman like Jeffrey Boycott played six over grazing, you're going for the day. Again, you come back, there were another five overs, take two runs, and make you tired. So you feel sometimes frustrated. You want to have a pack of fast bowlers who can say, okay, if he's gone, everybody's coming back and trying to hit you. Uh, I felt sometimes lonely there. I, I mean, Captain look up to you all the time. Not what in the series this time happened. We played really bad. And Captain had to bowl. In my time, Captain <laughs> didn't have to bowl. He had to throw the ball towards him. The other thing you said, Paul, you know, as, as far as all about cricket, is in the golden period, with, particularly with Imran and Imran and, and Procky just before you and Gary, golden period for all round cricket. This is that you, you were able to bat. Do you, do you think that that, that in, in a way, was a chance for you to relax and, and take some of the strain off the pressure of having to carry your attack? Uh, I, I think being an all-rounder is uh, probably the most difficult role in the game of cricket because look, you can bowl with the new ball or bowl the side out, help bowl the side out, um, and then within a half an hour, particularly when you deal with batting line, you know, <laughs> you've got to have the pads on, one of them going out the bat. Uh, not only once, twice, but about 50 times during my 18 years. But, but I think the all-rounder is a very special sort of player to have. Uh, it's always been determined that if you have a batting average higher than your bowling average, then you won't tend to be uh, an all-rounder. And that was a special era to be playing in, Kathy, wasn't it? Because um, 
the same with uh, BP and Imran and ourselves, is the all-rounder could turn a match with an individual or inspired batting or bowling performance. So there's a great onus and pressure on that player to perform. And often, when that all-rounder had a better performance than the all-rounder in the opposing side, it helped affect the, you know, the outcome of that uh, match or in fact that series. You love to bat. You love to play your shots. You once said the follow on at Lords by hitting four consecutive sixes of Eddie Hemmings. 24 needed to save the follow on. Can India do it? Eight down. Capital of it in four balls. I <laughs> did. And then your day, nothing matters. I think every cricketer has his own day. And uh, when you play for 15 years, uh, certain days God has created for you. Whatever you do, nothing can go wrong. Perhaps that's. Uh, where yeah, Eddie Hammond come on my range, so <laughs> bad luck guy. Um, he saw a field too many sides also. Well, it's good to see you both. I often wonder with the way that the game has gone now, there's so much cricket playing in short form, whether there will be the chance for all rounders to have their day again, because it simply takes too much out of you in four different forms of the game. But we love a bullet four of us. Yeah, and what are you talking about? Going four hours, he's so okay. Coming back, coming back. It's fine. Where I can't hit fast water, I start hitting the ball. <laughs> and you just have to go out and enjoy yourself. And uh, unfortunately, the cricket have changed over the period of time since uh, our hero Gary Silver is sitting there. We, we all all around admire him and his ability. I think the game has changed uh, in so many ways. The technology has come out, uh, the cricket bats become different. So I think we all enjoy that. But end of the day, uh, these days, uh, people, the fast bowler, all the cricket have love to bowl four days, which not in our time. I think four of us, we used to bowl when we are tired and gone out for that. Yeah, and that's what the fun is all about. Yeah, T20 cricket, we're on four overs. That's 12 minutes. That's all we've that's all got to do. Put in 12 minutes of effort. You know, for about, uh, how many? 20 games in India. Pick up a million bucks in six weeks. So, uh, <laughs> give me a break. Is that hard work or what? <laughs> I think, I think, definitely, you know, our era before that, they are going to feel very sorry about that. These young boys bowl four overs, and that also, as uh, Dennis said, that we need five people to look after us. I think we want to look after by each other. Uh, perhaps somewhere uh, the young a lot have to learn. You have to bowl 20 over to survive in a day, and that's what the fast bowling is all about. It's not four or five overs. I think the last spell, what you bowl three overs, and the days is coming to the last six overs, how good you can bowl. And that's what all fast bowling, not the first two overs, you are fresh, you are quick, you have all the energy. The youth of today, eh? The youth of today. Ladies and gentlemen, Carol there for Sir Richard Hadley.